But what, what were your immediate thoughts when you, when you heard the statements from, from Minister Manuel? Well, I think, Leanne, you know, the first point is that when we have any discussion about apartheid, on the one hand, you are either a denialist of apartheid or you are using it as a scapegoat. And I mean, we all understand that apartheid has left a profound legacy in South Africa. For the most part, apartheid has determined where you go to school, um, where you live, all these really, you know, fundamental things. But I think the big question that we need to ask is where do we start to take accountability. Where does the legacy of apartheid start to wear out and the government takes full accountability for the past 19 years? Yeah, and that's the big question. Yes. And, and where does it? Because, I mean, we're talking about service delivery, I think. And, I mean, if we have to interpret what the minister was saying, we're talking about Trevor Manuel. Um, he was really focusing in on a, on a service delivery level. Can we still blame apartheid? Uh, for the lack of service delivery. That's I the think, big question you know, in the debate going on. This is the thing. It, it needs to, I think we need to separate the two issues. There is the legacy of apartheid and then there are issues around service delivery. Um, and I think for, you know, we need to give the government credit where it's due. For the most part, the government has improved the living standards of South Africans. You know, more South Africans have access to water, to formal housing, to electricity. But on the flip side of that is that we see this blatant corruption, we see maladministration, we see provinces using um, wasteful expenditure to the tune of 24 billion rand. Um, and things like that really take away from any gains that they may have made um, you know, with improving the living standards of South Africans. And if, for example, there wasn't this you know, catered deployment and corruption, we'd be having a different a conversation. The conversation would be different in that we'd be saying, yes, the government has performed, and um, yes, now we realize that it does take longer than 19 years to rectify the injustice of apartheid. And no one is saying that, you know, we need to deny it. It's, it, it, you know, it, it is a fundamental thing. It's part of our history. But I think we need to look at issues of accountability, and that's really what it boils down to. Yeah. So when we look at the, the, the comments from our president saying that the legacy of apartheid runs too deep uh, for 19 years to wipe it all out, um, you know, there is truth to what he's saying as well. Absolutely. But I mean, if we take it in the context of what Trevor Manuel was saying, can we relate the two of them? I think, I mean, I think both, are, both arguments have their merit. But I think from um, Trevor Manuel is standing there as a minister in the government who is trying to, you know, to, I think it's a way of instilling confidence back, you know, in, in the electorate. We like to see that they're taking accountability and someone is standing up and saying, we do realize where we are underperforming. And I think that's the biggest thing. We can't have a denialism of, of the issues that we are facing in the country. That, that's not helpful to anyone in either, in either direction. Mm. Let's talk about the, the views of South Africans, though, because it's quite amazing when you read and you bring up the conversation of apartheid. You get... A lot of people saying, ah, oh, but in the apartheid days, things were like this. The education wasn't the way it is now. Health wasn't the way it was now. This wasn't the way. But, you know, again, you draw this comparison between uh, the two, I don't know, I suppose two evils one could call them. But, you know, when you look at times, how do South Africans feel? Do they feel better off in general or worse off? What's the reality? The, the reality is I think South Africans in some, in some circles are getting apartheid fatigue. So it, it's us continue to blame about it when we should be then um, speaking to the powers that be to, to, to rectify the situation. I think also if we look especially from um, you know, the, the perspective of young people, there are many people in this country who didn't experience it. They might be, they are definitely affected by the effects of apartheid, but all they have is to judge the government on the past 19 years. That is their only um, reference point. And I think you know, for us to always be going back to something that some other people in the population don't understand, um, it, 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 it sort of distances the government from young people. I I definitely say that, you know, and that's something that they need to look into, especially now that we're leading up to an election year. Yeah. Will we get to a point in this country where we no longer blame the legacy of apartheid for the problems we're going through? Will that always be there? I think, Leanne, I don't think we'll get to a point where um, we will have a conversation that doesn't involve apartheid. And I think one of those things um, is if we look at our Rainbow Nation narrative. You know, on the one hand, it was very good. It helped us, um, you know, get through and have a wonderful transition from the apartheid to our democratic society. But on the other hand, this rainbow narrative that we've taken on has denied people a moment to grieve and to, to you know, to actually face what had happened in apartheid. And that's why we're getting a lot of, um, you know, um, upset and anger from, you know, the bottom up. People are, haven't had the opportunity to, to effectively deal with what happened. And so that will always be a calling card and a, and a reference point for most people in this country. 
Bertrand. Bertrand, a pleasure speaking to you. Although we need a lot longer to yes. talk about this. Thank you so much for <laughs> being our guest much, here on Morning Live. That conversation is still open. If you want to comment, you know how to get hold of us. You're more than welcome to. Uh, Bortimelo is from the uh, South African Institute of Race Relations.